Um, I'm, I'm going to uh, start with a quote as well, but um, I'd like uh, to ask you this. So, um, Indonesia is expected to reach a um, golden generation in 2045, which is only about uh, 25 years from now. Do you think it's possible? Yes. Definitely, yes. Because like what Christopher Reese said, um, uh, there are so many of our dreams at first seems impossible, but then they become improbable, and then when we summon the will, they become inevitable. So, um, does it work? <laughs> so, um, uh, if each of us start from very little, and then start from what we know best, why not? Like, uh, for example, um, my presentation is related to language and it will be implemented in education. So, um, before I start this, I want to ask you, uh, what aspects do you think that can influence um, the way you communicate? What aspects? Any aspects? Culture. Culture, yes. What else? Language. Language, language okay. Age, geography. Age, geography. Circle, friends. Circle friends, gender. yes. Parents. Sorry? Gender. Gender, parents, exactly. There are so many aspects that can influence the way we communicate. But tonight I'm going to talk about the relation between language and culture. So um, uh, I present you my research called Challenges and Strategies in English as a Lingua Franca, hence for ELF communication among Indonesian postgraduate students in Victoria. Oops. Uh oh. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I have to do this. Okay, so uh, the background of this study is that we know uh, that the world has become interconnected. Um, it means that it becomes easier and easier for people from different places in the world to communicate to each other. And then when they communicate, uh, uh, so. Uh, what makes it even easier is because the emerging of social media and then uh, the advances of technology and then they communicate in a lingua franca. Lingua franca means um, a shared language uh, by communicators coming from different countries which means they have different first languages. And uh, we, we're going to talk about English as a lingua franca even though in the world there are so many uh, lingua francas. And then um, the next one. Uh, the second background is because there is a marked increase in the number of Indonesian students going abroad. It means that a good proficiency in ELF uh, is very significant. The aims of this study is first to investigate challenges in ELF uh, interactions. What makes uh, ELF interaction challenging? <coughs> Um, I will give you a uh, oh, decimal. Can I just touch something? It's easier that way. Um, ah, okay. <laughs> 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 How's me? <laughs> Um, people coming from different um, uh, different places, which means they have the knowledge of their first language, and not only that, they have uh, different cultures um, embedded uh, within them. So it means that it will influence their norms and expectations, which will of course influence in the way they communicate. Uh, for example, in writing or speaking. The next one is uh, the second pr purpose of this study is to investigate the communicative strategies to cope with um, a potential misunderstanding arise in ELF communication. Uh, so to get meaningful data, six people were interviewed, three males and three females, and then they were interviewed uh, based on their experiences inside and outside the classroom uh, especially related to the LF interaction <coughs> with their university friends or lecturers that uh, speak different languages from them. And then the criteria is they are postgraduate students in Victoria and then when the research was conducted they had lived in Victoria for 
more than one year so that they have experiences or enough experiences to share. The findings, uh, the first uh, section of the finding is about challenges uh, from the participants, turns out that pronunciation, which is uh, first language influence, is very challenging. Sometimes when we speak to our friends coming from China or Japan, for example, it's difficult to understand their pronunciation because their English is affected by their first language. The same thing, when our friends speak to us, sometimes it's difficult for them to understand because our English is influenced by Bahasa Indonesia. The second one is unfamiliar topics. For example, when we talk about a specific culture, describing a specific culture to our friends, um, Siraman, for example, some people will simply say bridal shower, but they don't realize that a bridal shower in Western society has different uh, meaning from Siraman. So, of course, we cannot simply translate Siraman to be um, bread or shower. We need to describe it with, um, uh, you know, like, uh, it, it, it's, it's difficult for us because we need to find the words, terms, and phrases that are appropriate to describe Siraman, for example. And the next challenge is um, organization in speaking, for example, giving opinions or making a request. In making a request, for example, in some society, in Asian society, when we make requests, uh, I don't know whether you realize it or not, you say the reasons first, and then you say the request at the end, because we are inductive cultures. While other society, they will say the request first, and then the reasons at the end. They are deductive cultures. So uh, it doesn't mean that inductive is better <coughs> over deductive, but because they are different, uh, it is challenging. Like for example, um, for inductive people, uh, like people who say the request at first, it seems rude. And then for deductive people, people who say the request at the end, sounds confusing. So the thing is, it's not um, the one is better over the other, but just different. The next one is the text organization, uh, especially in arranging emails or letters. So for example, when we write emails, some society will address the addressee by first name. Some others will address the addressee by last name. Again, nothing is better off than the other, but we need to know which one is which so that um, we, we can choose the appropriate uh, addressing especially if we know uh, to whom we send the emails to. The next one is uh, about the strategies. The first strategy is to improve ELF proficiency by having frequent exposures, but not only exposures, also involvement to ELF. Um, my participants said that uh, joining cultural or intercultural organizations are very important. There are a lot of, a lot of types of organization, for example, bilateral or multilateral base, international students base, usually like university um, uh, organization, and also interest base like underwater club or photography. And uh, by joining this um, organization, it is expected, and then they, my participants said that it's developing their pronunciation or the knowledge of pronunciation of other cultures, vocabularies, idioms, and uh, etc. The second one, the second strategy that they do is to develop respect and appreciation towards other cultures. This is actually quite a surprising finding for me because all my participants believe that it is important to accommodate. How uh, they do the accommodation? By gaining knowledge of other cultures. And gaining knowledge of other cultures, they can refer back to their past experiences, they can use social media, and then they can join uh, like intercultural activities. And then the second one is to adjust. By, uh, by adjusting is being open-minded. When you are open-minded, um, you won't be thinking that your culture is the best of the others. And then by being open-minded, uh, it's not easy for you to be offended. The next one that is important is that to understand the do and don'ts in different cultures. By understanding do and don'ts in different cultures, 
it is least likely that you will offend others. So the conclusion is that the challenges faced by uh, postgraduate students in Victoria is not only in sorry in ELF communication is not only language related but also culture related. And then uh, intercultural organization and then the emerging social media as well as the advances of technology uh, play a significant role in communicative strategies. So what is the implication especially for Indonesia? I think, uh, do you agree if I say intercultural aspects or cultural aspects are uh, very significant to language? Yes. Okay, uh, so the same thing with me, the same thing with uh, my participants. So that because um, they play an important role in language, it will be a really good idea if we integrate intercultural aspects or cultural aspects in language teaching, especially English language teaching. How do we integrate them? By um, making it teaching and learning resources. For example, English teachers can take um, uh, English TV program from Japan, for example, and also do uh, some collaboration with colleagues overseas. Like for example, uh, you study here, it's time for you to make networking, and then when you go back to Indonesia and you teach English, uh, you can work together with your friends. For example, you can work with your Chinese friends, so your students and then their students, they can exchange emails in English, for example, so that your students have the experience in writing uh, emails in English to um, uh, other uh, people from other places in the world. Uh, so, uh, what is the benefit from the implications? Of course, there are some um, obvious benefits. Tourism, as we know, and I think Jennifer earlier also uh, talked about this, tourism is a growing sector in Indonesia, so that it is very important for people to have ELF or English as a lingua franca uh, proficiency because people who work in tourism industry, they will, they will meet people from different places and different cultures. The next one is education. It's not only about having bigger opportunities to study abroad, but also you can, it is easier for you to join an international seminar or to publish your work. The next one is uh, about diplomacy, it is, it is very clear. Can you mention other sectors other than these three? Because I believe there are so many. What are other sectors that will benefit from uh, ELF proficiency? Everyone? Business. Business, exactly, because you will meet um, people from other countries. What else? Economy. Economy, yeah, thank you. <laughs> what else? Culture, Cultures, there you go, social, yes, arts, music, sports, anything, a lot. So, why not? So, thank you. I think that's <laughs>